Hi, welcome. Welcome to the Bella's block. Okay, so I want to talk about some things. I'm sorry my voice is all messed up. I just barely got my voice back. I had some issues going on. I was in I still can't hear, but and I couldn't speak and my eyes had pink eye. I just been so sick. Felt like I was up against an attack by a witch who blinded my eyes and my my hearing and my speech so I couldn't speak or warn anybody but anyways um I want to talk about this dream I had um that I learned about because the Lord's showing me some things but anyways um what ended up happening because you know how Satan works is he dresses up as, as your favorite sin and um here's my little kitty he was somebody I don't know he's homeless um, see, he's got a bad little cut on his leg right there. I don't know if you can see. It's right there. He got attacked, but, um, I've been feeding him for two years. Uh, he, it looks like he was some kind of a home pet because he's declawed. So what happens now is, um, he can't protect himself. You know, kind of reminds me of when we don't have God as our Savior, we have no way to protect ourselves from any f attacks. Same with this kitty cat, you know, because they declawed him. He has no way to protect himself against the cats that are out here now that he's he's homeless. But he's, you know, luckily I, I feed him and he just stays around my house and stays here with me now. But, I mean, poor kitty can't even protect himself and he keeps getting attacked. And that's why I just nursed him back to health on that one paw of his. Um, he got a real, he's been getting constantly attacked. And it's like when you don't have no claws, you can't, you can't defend yourself. It's kind of like that in spiritual warfare. It's kind of what it reminds me of, you know. Well, I was having this dream about, um, you know, Satan had sent this this uh, woman to me in this dream to try to seduce me. But see, I'm not gay. So, but he sends this beautiful, beautiful woman in my dream to try to seduce me. And what he does, like I told you, he dresses up as your favorite sin. But he, what he does is he sends this beautiful woman, I don't know why he even thought I was gay, because I'm not, um, sends this, like she looked like a model or a movie star or something, she was so beautiful, and I was with these two rich, rich people, I, I don't know, I think they were like billionaires or something, and we were in this really, really, really fancy hotel, everything was like made out of gold, and had chandeliers, and marble, and tapestry, I mean, it was just really, really fancy. So this woman tries to seduce me in this dream, and the next thing I know, um, I don't know why, I ended up in the same room as her. So I was laying in bed, and this girl's like trying to come up on me and trying to seduce me in bed, and I told her to get over on her side. Then I went all the way to the corner so she couldn't get me because I just like totally like shined her. And um, she, well, she was trying to seduce me in bed, and I, I was like, why is this I felt so uncomfortable in that dream like this isn't even me so why is this all happening you know it was like totally just not me at all um because I'm not a material person I'm not gay I mean I don't know he must have been really trying to figure me out or something uh, next thing I know you know I just totally shun her told her to get on her side of the bed stay there and just leave me alone then I turned my back on her I went all the way to the corner by the nightstand where I was st like sleeping and I was just kind of guarded, but I had my back towards her. She got all pissed off. Next thing I know, she's all attacking me. And she's clawing me, right, in the back. Because I had my back towards her, which I shouldn't have done it. Because I think I was just being prideful when I laughed at her. Which was stupid, because that set me open. Being prideful, because that is a sin. And that's what made me open for an attack. Well, next thing I know, she's clawing me in the back. And then when she's clawing me, she puts this thing in my back. And it was like, I could feel it under my skin. It's a tracer. Um, it was almost like a kind of, some kind of GPS thing for Satan to keep track of people like me. So I could feel it, her place it as she clawed me in the back. And I, I couldn't reach where she clawed me. Next thing I know, she puts it in my back. And um, she's clawing me. And I could feel her like plant the seed in my back. And then I could feel it burning. It was like on fire. And I just knew she had put some kind of tracking device in my back. 
they call it a tracer, you know, but it's like Satan's GPS to keep track of people like us that are all about God and we're his soldiers, you know, and are his warriors. And then I just felt it, you know, I felt this thing just burn, burning the heck out of me. It just felt like this foreign object that was not even supposed to be in my back. Well, the next day I went and showed my neighbors and she said, oh my God, your back's clawed up. And I said, that's so painful. It's on, it feels like something's on fire, like something's under my skin. So anyways, I, what I did, I knew something was not right. So I actually got some anointing oil and I, and I put it all, I had my friend put it all over my back where that tracer was and where all the attacks were. And then I had like, two or three people pray at the same time I did and then all of a sudden it was gone it was like God had removed it through prayer I was you know praying in tongues too and then all of a sudden this thing got removed out of my back and it went away the fire just but it took three days it was after the third day um, I couldn't handle the pain anymore because it was really painful but I just want to talk about those tracers. You know, those are not your imagination. You know, and, and what happens is he attacks us at night. You know, he attacks us uh, when we're dreaming. You know, that's how Satan puts us up for an attack is through our dreams because that's how he accesses us is through our dream state. And, and he sends these demons to come up on us and... Um, like when we're a threat to him, you know, his kingdom or his, you know, him trying to recruit people, he'll like put these um, tracers on your back so he can observe you and he can track you on everything. Um, so what ended up happening was I have a sister in Christ that used to be an ex-witch. Now she's saved by Jesus. Amen. And I asked her about it. That's how I learned about it because I said it feels like they put some type of they tagged me with something in, and I feel like there's something under my skin because it felt like a bump and it was just on fire. She goes, oh, no, you were being tracked when you're a threat because she used to be a daughter of Satan. I, so that's why I love it when, you know, I, I, I preach spiritual warfare and, and a lot of these Satanists and witches, they come to Christ because then what ends up happening is now they're on on Jesus' side as warriors for Christ. And then they could teach us so much about what's going on, you know, as far as all these weapons Satan's can use against us. And then it benefits us to find out how to, to get rid of them, which that is exactly what ended up happening. Um, so I just wanted to let you know about that. Tracers, you need to pray, put anointing oil on that. And remember where it says it's two, when two or three are praying, I'll be there. What you got to do is make sure that when you put that anointing oil, wherever you think you have a tracer, because a lot of people can't get rid of these tracers, you need to get at least two, three, four people praying on you, including yourself as you put anointing oil to get rid of these tracers. So that's what I would suggest, okay? All right, well, God bless you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye now.